Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Roselier. I want to do a uh, video showing the configuration in the TP-Link ER605 OMADA Gigabit MultiWAN VPN router uh, that is that I have set up and running in order to make sure um, to have this basically backup internet system running in a home network environment. And I've done a whole succession of playlist videos on this just explaining basically um, what that involves and basically it's you know having a second internet connection in your home or in your home office um, whatever you're doing at home that you want to have really good internet for and basically creating a system that both of these internet connections are going to be running into this piece of hardware the uh, the load balancer now the TP-Link ER605 is categorized mostly as a VPN router uh, but load balancing and this, the, the, the feature I'm using it for is just called failover. Now you can, it doesn't have to be a VPN router to do failover. This feature will be in you know, a lot of wired routers, SMB routers, um, typically a business router. In other words, not your average consumer router. Your average consumer router is gonna have one WAN port. Um, and you know, if you're looking at multi WAN routers, so that, that would be a good starting point if you're looking to do this. Uh, you're going to be getting products that will be able to take in more than one internet connection and if it's multi-one there's a very high chance it's going to have failover as a feature just that the firmware will be able to do that for you um, and uh, the er605 is no exception it can uh, it can do this out of the box uh, very easily so what i wanted to do in this vid was to just show you guys the settings to set that up before i do um lest there be any confusion this is just a network diagram of how i have this set up on this network the load balancer in this case is er605 i have a cellular uh and isp routers both running as bridges that's important because you want to have one router running on your network to avoid nasty things like dhcp server conflicts uh so what you want to do is um either set up your these these guys uh, the isp router whatever your two connections are whether it's fiber and dsl or dsl and satellite whatever is upstream of the load balancer you want to have that configured as a bridge if possible if you can't have it configured as a bridge in the in the back end uh, then set up some bridge like settings and that's basically um, assigning a static ip lease that's going to be outside of the dhcp server range on the load balancer that was a bit of a mouthful so this this uh, load balancer is going to be doing the actual networking on your network uh, it's going to have a the DHCP server is going to have a, uh, a LAN range and you want these guys to be assigned uh, static local IPs that are outside of that range both WANs now the ER605 can handle either two or it can actually handle three WANs um, as well so in this case I'm using just two WANs and then what I've done is, as I said, um, these guys are just running as bridges, effectively, my ISP, DSL router, and cellular. And basically everything on the LAN side, this is networking for my whole house. We're talking about NAS, media center, desktop computers, wireless access points, the whole shebang. Everything's coming out of the LAN side of the load balancer. So first things first would be um, to retrace my steps when I set this up network one and uh you're going to want to out of the box it's going to have only uh, the first one port only one WAN port and four lan ports there's five five ports on this device and they are gigabit ports so they'll support up to uh 1000 megabits per second in terms of throughput um so that's great because uh you know some of the older tp link um load balancing routers business smb routers uh, like the TR470 only do 10100. So if you have a faster internet connection, you don't want to run it through a 10100 port because you're going to create a bottleneck. So um, if you're using two, and you can also you could also do a uh, triple WAN setup, which would have you know two backup connections. But I think most people doing a failover setup uh, for just this purpose of high availability. In other words no interruptions to internet if the isp is down let's bring up a cellular line uh most people would probably home users would be happy with just two one ports if you're looking to do something more complicated uh you're probably using more sophisticated networking gear than tp link so uh the the two ones are, are probably good for most people so you need to tick one lan one that's the interchangeable so you've got three of these ports sorry technically speaking two interchangeable ports 
uh, this is fixed as one, these two are fixed as lan, and uh, these two can be flipped between one and lan. So what, out of the box, it's only one one. Therefore, you want to tick this guy to get the second port into one mode. Leave the other three as lan ports. And uh, then it'll do a reboot. And once it's rebooted, you'll be into this config and you'll have two tabs, uh, one in one lan and one. And uh, this is ISP router for me. And something kind of cool is you can uh, assign different DNS servers for each one. So you can have your, when you're connected through the ISP, putting it through OpenDNS. And when you're connected through the backup connection, let's do Google DNS servers, whatever you want to do. Uh, or you can actually have a, uh, you can have DNS servers for everything. Um, and that's another option. But that's just, I've just done it like this a bit duplicitously. Um, I've entered it for both one, even though they're the same servers. Um, so this is the configuration that, uh, that I've uh, gone for. Um, I've set the MTU to maximum. Um, no upstream or downstream bandwidth constraints. That's for metering, you don't need that. And um, you don't really need, need to change most of these things. The default gateway is gonna inherit. So um, you're gonna have that gateway login for the routers and that's gonna remain, I've assigned it to be static. So that hopefully should not change. Um, and it's connected uh, to that one and um, status is connected. So that's the kind of important thing is you wanna make sure both of these, if they're supposed to be up, they have connectivity, they should say they are connected. And if they don't, hit connect and see what happens. And uh, you can also manually disconnect them as well. So this is the cellular router. This is, a, this is I mean, these are both um, one, and one LAN one, these are actually both physical routers sitting in my networking cabinet. They're, these aren't virtualized anything, they're real pieces of gear. And uh, likewise, it's inherited a different gateway for this router. Dynamic IP, is, is, is it, it's working for me. Um, the only time I did have a bit of trouble with this at the start, and that was when uh, I saw, that, that was basically when it was flipping over to the cellular occasionally when the primary seemed to be working. And I fixed that by basically just checking, upgrading the firmware, that was the fix. And now it's fine. Um, I'll show you just at the end of this video how to periodically spot check. Uh, but I'm trying to just get all the information covered here as, as quickly and efficiently as possible. So um, you wanna connect your routers. Um, as I said, you wanna have uh, the, the IP addresses of those WAN routers outside of the LAN range, which can be found in LAN. And uh, once that, once those are connected um, and they, the routers upstream of it have internet connectivity and they're showing as connected, then you've got two connections to use. And now all that needs to be done is for you to set up the backup rule. And that is in transmission and load balancing. Now, according to the user manual, you are supposed to have load balancing enabled even if all you're doing is failover. Uh, so click on enable load balancing and then you're gonna have uh, link backup and this is where you configure the all important backup rule right up to think about the situation up to now the load balancer has two viable internet connections coming into two different one ports it's got one and it's got two and you've got all your stuff networked into it but um, if all you want to use the other connection for is backup you're going to need to spell that out so that the uh, the hardware knows only to use that um, as a backup. Otherwise, you can do other cool things such as uh, application optimized routing and create VLANs and other stuff. All I'm doing with my TP-Link ER605 is failover. That's the only purpose it has on my network. I'm not utilizing the VPN. I'm not utilizing a lot of, 99% of the features, just this. But you still need to click on enable load balancing and then you need to set the backup rule. And my backup rule is pretty simple. The primary one, I'm telling it, well, that's one, and the backup is gonna be the first interchangeable port. And if I wanted it to be the other way around, I would just assign the ports differently. And that is all it is. That's basically, we're done now. That's the backup in place. Um, if you have three ones connected, then there's gonna be a difference between these two failover settings because Let's say, um, I don't know, you have, a, a, you have a fiber connection and you've got a 4G and a 5G line. For some weird reason, uh, you wanna have you know, two backup cellular networks. So you've got three going in and this would be if 
either primary failed, let's say, uh, sorry, that was a bad example. Let's say um, two fiber lines, two different companies and uh, cellular backing those up. So this would be, well, if either of the fiber lines gives it out, we're gonna bring up the backup and this is gonna be different. This is gonna be, we, we're gonna need all of those primary WANs uh, to fail, um, in which case we'd be ticking on two WANs from this dropdown, but we've only got two. So in this case, it's simple. The primary is WAN, backup is WAN LAN one, and I've gone for fade over, I've clicked enable. And the final thing to say in this commentary is that uh, the online detection, you've got a few options here. Uh, the automatic mode, according to the user manual, I believe, don't quote me on this, is that it's going to uh, ping the DNS servers you've assigned to it um, or your ISP's ones, and that's gonna be how it's going to pull for online connectivity. You can also assign, you can also give it manual servers, so here's Google DNS servers, or final option, you can have it set to always online, and therefore, uh, you know, as the name suggests, the, the uh, firmware is gonna assume, well, that's always a viable connection, and uh, we'll just assume that's live in all situations. That's really all there is to say about it. Uh, that is it set up. And uh, one other final thing. How are you going to make sure it's working? Well, this is one way to do it. There's stats, traffic, statistics. Now, um, how do I know this is working fine and my difficulties with it turning on to the wrong connection have been overcome by that firmware upgrade? Well, look at the traffic stats. So this is the ISP. This is what's supposed to be primary. One LAN one is supposed to be cellular. And uh, look at this column here, total RX bytes. Now this is since it was last uh, restarted. So it's pulled in uh, 2.9 gigabytes of internet from the ISP connection. And by contrast, it's only pulled in 104 megabytes from the backup connection. Therefore, whatever that ratio is gonna be, one to 30 approximately, that makes absolute sense. That actually, that's better than saying 2.9 and zero because then you'd say, well, is it actually working or do I have just no downtime on the primary? This tells me that there is a small bit of downtime and the cellular has done a little bit of work, not a lot of work given that I'm paying for a 20 gigabyte cellular plan, but whatever, uh, it's better. It, it is there and uh, it brings me a lot of comfort to know it's there and that if there's any roadworks, this is when it tends to go down. Uh, that's when the ISP line has a habit of going down, then uh, this guy is gonna flip me over to cellular and cellular is gonna pick up the slack and gonna keep connecting. And it's supposed to flip back. I wouldn't always count on it. Uh, if you ever have unusually slow connectivity, just check, go on to uh, who's my ISP and you'll see what connection you're using. And if there's any problems, you can resolve those maybe by a reboot or something. Uh, but it, I believe it should flip back, but I'm not 100% certain about that. But in my case, I can see it looks like everything is working fine, thankfully, um, finally, because as I said, that was there was an old firmware that had a bit of bugginess that would flip onto cellular for no reason when primary was fine. But uh, 2.9 to 104 to me looks just about right. So that's my video, guys. Uh, failover configuration on the ER605. TP-Link, Omada Gigabit, Multi-WAN, VPN, router for provisioning high availability internet in a home networking environment, or has to be said, this would totally be uh, viable for a business as well, and maybe even more, uh, more applicable in that kind of an environment. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe for more videos.